Now we're given that x equals 4 sine of 2y plus 6 and asked to find dy by dx then in terms of x. So how would I do this? Well this is different to what we normally expect. Normally we have a y here and we have x's on this side. So it's very easy to find dy by dx. Now I don't want to rearrange this then to make y the subject. It's going to be too awkward. No, what I'm going to do is find dx by dy first of all. Because once I've found out dx by dy, I can call upon this principle, which we should already know. We should already know that dy by dx is equal to 1 divided by dx dy. So if I find dx by dy, I should be able to get dy by dx. So let's go and get dx dy first of all. So we've got therefore dx dy. Now what we've got here is a composite function for the sine, sine of 2y plus 6. We haven't just got a single letter here like sine of y but 2y plus 6. So to get around this problem we use the chain rule. We let t say equal the 2y plus 6. And that means that we can now say that x equals 4 sine t simply t. So therefore y equals, sorry not y, x equals 4 sine of t. Now we can use the chain rule to differentiate this. And the chain rule for this particular example is going to be that dx by dy is going to equal dx by d something multiplied by the same d something over dy. Now these d somethings have got to be the same as, because it's as if they cancel out leaving you with dx by dy. And that it's going to be dt in this example. So I'll put that in there. Okay, let's get back to this then. So to find dx dy, we've got to first of all find dx by dt. And dx by dt, if you differentiate sine t, goes to cosine t. So what we've got here is dx by dt will be 4 cos t. But instead of writing t, I'm going to write 2y plus 6. So we end up here with 4 cos of t, but t was 2y plus 6. And I've put that in square brackets, okay, to separate what I write next from the 2y plus 6. And what we write next is to multiply it by dt dy. And if t equals 2y plus 6, dt dy is going to be simply 2. So I put a 2 there. And let's clean this up. What we've got now is 4 times 2, which is 8, 8 cos of 2y plus 6. Now, we haven't got this in terms of x yet, okay? So how do we get around that problem? Well, we've got to look towards an identity. And that identity is that sine squared of any angle, let's say theta, plus cos squared of any angle, well, I should say any angle, it's got to be the same angle as this one, is identical to 1. So this is an identity that we should know. And from this, if we were to subtract sine squared from both sides, we end up with cos squared theta is identical to 1 minus sine squared theta. And to get what cos theta is, cos theta would be identical to the square root. We square root both sides and we get 1 minus sine squared theta. Don't make the mistake of thinking that this is 1 minus sine theta. You can't go around square rooting each term. Okay, so we've got cos theta is identical to this. So if we were to let theta be the 2y plus 6, then can you see that we have got that the cos of 2y plus 6 must be equal to the square root of 1 minus the sine squared of 2y plus 6. 
So we can write this in here. So let's just write that as 8 then. Now, be the square root, let's just mark that in here, of 1 minus sine squared theta, sine squared of 2y plus 6. Alright? Still not in terms of x though, but if we go back up to here, can you see that the sine of 2y plus 6, if we were to divide both sides by 4, the sine of 2y plus 6 would be x over 4. So we can just replace that in here. So this equals 8 multiplied by the square root then of 1 minus, and in place of that it's x over 4, that's the sine of 2y plus 6, but it's squared, so we need to square that. And if we tidy this up, we've got 8 multiplied then by the square root of 1 minus x squared over 16. And it's not good to have two terms here in a square root. Whenever you get square roots, it's always good if you can get it down to one term. And we can do that here. We can put this all over a common denominator of 16. So if we come down here, okay, we've got that therefore dx dy still all right, equals, we've got the 8 multiplied by the square roots then. Now the 1 we can think of as 16 over 16. So we've got 16 minus x squared all over 16. And let's just bar this off as well so that we don't run into that. Now when we've got something like this, a fraction here, we can think of this as one term, if we put brackets around that if you like, over another term. So that means it's the same as square rooting the top over the square root of the bottom. So this will be 8 multiplied by the square root of 16 minus x squared all over the square root of 16, which is 4. Now we can cancel out the 4. 4 into 4 goes 1, 4 into the 8 goes 2. And one thing we must also remember is that when we take the square root of something, it can be plus or minus. So going back to here, we could have plus or minus the 8 there, plus or minus all the way down through here. So we end up with plus or minus at the front here. Let's tidy this up. So we've got now plus or minus 2 root of 16 minus x squared. Now this is dx dy, but when it comes to dy by dx, as I say, we go back to this result here, and it's 1 divided by dx by dy. So using that principle, dy by dx will be 1 divided by this result. So we've got plus or minus 1 all over 2 multiplied by the root of 16 minus x squared. And there you have it. So quite involved actually, but uh, hope that you've been able to follow that.